All right, YouTube, we're ready to fly this thing. It's been killing me. I've been wanting to fly this thing forever, and here goes nothing. Just to show you where we're gonna start with the battery, just for nose heaviness, we're gonna go right to that line, okay? That's basically the uh, 3200-6S right at the front edge, okay? So we're gonna run our flight time right to the recommended length. We have very calm conditions here. We'll show you a little bit of taxing. Okay, timer set to three minutes. Oh, that thing sounds good. Oh, yeah. Turn, baby, turn. Okay, you ready? Yep. No flaps. Oh, that is awesome. Out of the gear. Man, that thing sounds great. That was the maiden pass. A little sluggish on the rolls, probably because of my expo. Man, that looks so gorgeous. It's just rock solid up there. That's it. Into the throttle, takes a second to cool up. Let's switch direction so we can film with the sun behind us. About 50% cruise there. Okay, here we go. Oh, gorgeous. Let's shoot the moon, hon. You ready? Oh, gorgeous. How you doing over there, camera crew? Good. No throttle? Still solid. Oh, yes. Gorgeous. It's exactly as expected, guys. Out of the throttle, full speed pass here. Oh, that's fast. Still into full throttle there. I have to get rid of these uh, sunglasses. I drop them to my side there, hon. Okay. I don't want to risk it. Love it, but three minutes, I have 45 seconds left. I already know the thing I don't like about this plane. What? That was my flap. No, that was the out of control, just to show you how stable it is. It barely goes out of control. Okay, I'm gonna... Oh, there's no flaps. Here's the gear. Let's do a practice. Let's do a practice here. Oh, look at that thing. Look at that thing. It goes into alpha. Out of the flaps. Okay. I'm going to go over here. Just I've got a little bit of a nerve shaking me here. You do what you're doing there, camera crew. Okay. Gear coming out for a little resistance, similar to flaps. About 10% throttle here just to keep it moving so it doesn't take long to get kicked up. Pretty fast, hon. Yep. I'm gonna come the other way. Okay. Out of the gear. Okay, here's our gear. We're just gonna see how dialed in it really is. Efficiency flight mode now. Out of the throttle. Kiss the throttle there. I like that approach. Gear coming out. Keep away from the tree line, Brian. Flare it when you need it. Oh, buddy. That could be bad. <laughs> Carrying around here. Guys, that's not just for the 
camera, folks. Well, if it's on, we'll pick it up. You want to pause it? Wow, guys. That thing is glorious. I love it. It flies fast. It flies slowish. I cannot wait. And by the way, you'll notice my first lining was a grass lining. That was intentional. I knew I had to slow it down because I was coming in hot because the tree line's higher. Over here, I can bring it down and use gravity to help slow me down. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit of grade change going up the driveway. And what I do is I follow in and then I follow the contours. Very dangerous turn because when you turn like that and depend on your bank angle, you're going to end up stalling at times. So I have to really ride the line. So you'll notice the gear are totally fine. There's not even one speck of grass except for this. I think we're good. Yeah. So let's go test the battery. I'm at two minutes, 33 seconds. Unfortunately, I just blabbed for about, what, about 30 seconds? Yeah, not So long. that was a five minute flight, guys. We are gonna fly again right now, and we are gonna push back the CG a little bit because I wanted to flare. It flew so gloriously, but I can tell this thing is nose heavy right now, and it is glorious. It is rock solid. The expo I set up is too much. Um, I want to be able to be more crazy with it. All right, timer's clear. Let's check the power. Okay, on the ground for you, baby. It is hot one today too. Tell the people at home. Well, it's 84 right now and it's like 8.15 in the evening, so. Goodness gracious. Okay. It was nasty today. Well, it wasn't nasty, it was beautiful. No. But... Oh, yep. Okay, so five minutes is probably about the most you're gonna wanna do on that. We're just under, we're just under 3.8. So we're 25% left, okay? Oh man, pack is warm, nothing crazy. Now this thing's gonna wanna tip up, so just plan on it, folks. The landing gear are really good air brakes and they shift that CG back, helps you with your high alpha. That's probably what, touch it, mm. it's warm. warm. Not crazy, just no. Warm. This thing's gonna want to carry a little bit more now, but not when I push it back. It's gonna be more high alpha capable because the CG is gonna get pushed back. What I really want to do is I want it to be here and see if my leads will reach, so it can be all the way back, okay, like this, which is a pretty big change, folks, from what we just did. That ain't gonna reach. No. Nope. We'll have to get an adapter if we do that. So in this case, we'll come over here and do this. Obviously, we have full range telemetry on this. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. That's not true. This doesn't have the full smart everything, but we do have telemetry to a certain extent, okay? So that's in there fairly good. Um, I'd like to have a little bit more Velcro, so maybe we'll just add a little bit. We'll show you the whole process this time. If you stick around, guys, you can watch the unbox and build on this. Very smooth process. Look how far back I am, guys. I'm all the way back without hitting that little detent or that little uh, whatever plastic thing on the receiver. Mm -hmm. Can they see a little better from back here, maybe? There, that thing. Okay. So, that's this is going to be the 4,000 milliamp 6S Glorious 6S Smart Pack. Three-minute timer. We are going to fly this thing a little bit longer. Yes, I am going to back taxi. Only because it is glorious to watch. Are you, okay. are you oh, checking the CG or you're just going to no, go with it there? I'm not checking okay. the CG. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. I love the sound. It sounds a lot different than I thought it was going to. It does not turn super sharp, folks. So you have to be a little bit discerning on this. Okay, stop right there, camera crew. Okay. Sorry guys, operator error. Got a little excited there. Almost pure, almost unlimited vertical. Look at the elevator authority, guys. Right out of a stall. So gorgeous. Okay, let's go into the bowl. I really want to shoot some landing. Here we go. Camera crew. Here we are. Still feeling a little bit of down trim there. See how sharp I can turn with the elevator now? Okay, here we go. Bring it back down.
Give the neighbors a quick view. Oh yeah, gorgeous. Okay, we're going into our, basically our higher expo rates, or rather lower expo rates. We'll see if we can do just a little bit of high alpha here. Riding into the throttle. Oh yeah, she, she'll high alpha. We'll do that again. I want you on my left, please. If you go up the runway. One step back, please. Thank you. Ooh, high speed stall. Thank you. Man, this thing sounds so good. It is really, really well behaved. I mean, it's like I want so badly to click flaps into it. I just did that with the rudder at the end, folks. It's like I just can't resist doing high-speed passes, which is bad for battery life. Okay, 21 seconds on the three-minute timer. Man, that silhouette is gorgeous. All right, let's do some practice passes here. We'll do a dirty pass with gear. Obviously, there's no flaps to demonstrate. That's our timer elapsing. Okay, gear coming down. We're going to let that slow us down just a little bit. We're going to be up a 10% throttle there, staying away from the trees, getting in over the entrance. We've got a couple of bushes to watch out for. Dirty pass. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Climbing out, out of the, out of the gear. We're going to get that nose down, get it flying, using the rudder to tip it over there. Right in front. Right in front. Oh, yeah. No bad tendencies at all. I'm not losing it, but it feels like maybe I should land. So let's do it. Gear coming down. Over the edge. That's a safe place to go though, because mm -hmm. we smoothed all this out, guys. I don't know if you realize this, but we've been working on this runway really hard. Doesn't look like I've been trimming it much, and that's intentional because it's all fresh grass on both sides. This side's got some mixed stuff in it, so it's it's basically not great to run into. But this stuff out here is very nice, very fine. Let's walk and look at it. Um, we could actually test the voltage out there. Why don't we pause take it? and we'll just do that. Kay. Grass. This grass. is the grass, guys. This is what we've been working on. And then this is what was here. Don't show them that yet. That's secret. Okay, throttle cuts on. Let's check for damage. I know a lot of you guys fly from grass runways, so you're always asking me things like this. Well, I mean, not always, but once in a while. Not like I'm known for grass strip takeoffs and landings. These gear are good. Nothing, right? No. Totally good. Nothing at all, guys. They just look good. They're operating well. I just, I'm, I'm halfway tempted to take off from the grass just to show you it'll work. But let's go ahead and test the voltage. Only disappointment with this plane is flaps. And I'll be honest with you, I, I might just add them anyway. Flapper arms, because a, a real plane like this would have flapper arms. And leading edge flaps. So if it weren't for that, I would just be absolutely in love with this plane and it, and it is a sweet plane that and then the full operational stabilators you want to show them those camera crew this one's a little bit shorter this balance lead it's hard to reach you know when you're flying on a 6s okay 39 percent. we could have gone a little bit further with it but when you're flying on a 6s and you're flying an EDF, guys. Um, many of you already know this. We're gonna go ahead and throw a 5,000 in here just so you know for our next flight. Um, that way you kind of get the full spectrum. Uh, we did not push that quite as much either because mm -hmm. I think the heavier pack really, really calls out. That's a 50C pack too, by the way. All right, let's go ahead and mm -hmm. uh, pause it and we'll get the next one strapped up and ready. All right, guys, so we got the uh, 5,000 milliamp 30C this time, 6S 22.2 volts, also known as 6S. Smart pack. We're going to throw this thing in here, and we're going to see what it can do for us. Um, this is a pretty heavy pack for this plane. 
I think it's going to fit. I'm going to actually put it at a bit of an angle. Um, that's usually not a great idea, but the only reason I'm doing that is just to get away from this nasty plug here. And I feel like that's going to give us as far back as we can do. Because you do want, you want to ride it all the way back, folks. Okay, so we're going to let that initiate. We're going to try not to bounce it around like crazy. So that safe and AS3X can be initiated at a level and true attitude. So I was talking about this right before we paused to walk back. When you're flying an EDF, don't ride it to the limit. You'll regret it. Plane like this takes some power. Look at that. It's in. No shimming, no nothing. Um, we are not going to mess around. We're going to go set this. We're not going to waste any juice on this. I got my timer still set to three minutes. We'll go ahead and start from down there if you guys want to pause for a minute. So minor complaint. These things are hard to grab mm. because they collapse when you pick it up under the weight of the plane. So it just makes you feel like it's going to break. Um, the good news is they're not going to break because that's just plastic. So it's really not of any concern. I haven't quite figured out where the wind's coming from tonight too. So I apologize for that. You can see our wind sock is just limp. And you know, really, I, if anything, it feels like it's blowing at us because we're walking down the hill. And I, I don't know if it is a little bit, maybe. We're gonna go ahead and take off from this spot, but I didn't want to waste any of the power on this takeoff or on back taxiing. So we'll start here. I wanna do a nice long takeoff. Okay. I wanna wait till this car goes by. Okay. Let me pause. All right guys, throttle cuts off. That's on the 5,000. Almost unlimited vertical, but not quite. Getting out of the power, preserving the pack. I love the way it flies. I love it. It's very good flying. Very well behaved. That's a heavy pack, by the way. I'm gonna just get accustomed to this spot here. That was close. What'd you think, hon? That was... Was it a cringe? Yes. I wasn't worried about the house at all. I was worried about the power line. Because we were close. Oh, that's so gorgeous. Both. What, the house and the power line? Yeah, all of it. Oh, trust me, power lines win. I know. So is the house. Okay, I'm gonna be just fine. I'm just carrying out a maneuver that's already happening. That was good. A little less stressful for you mm -hmm. there. Yep. Oh man, look at that gorgeous sunset we're getting. Different perspectives, guys. They screw with you. Yeah. Nice crisp rolls. Man, that thing looks good. Coming in, no throttle here. We'll just follow along the runway. That was not a stall, that was an operator error. You stay where you are if you can. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay, we're going to the road. We're gonna try a landing out there. Got a minute left and so we should be able to shoot a couple. Hold on, we got a dog fight here. See that? See the dog fight here. That's full up elevator. Hey, by the way, we haven't tried safe. You're safe. Yeah, a little bit of nose down attitude. Not not big fan of that. Okay, gear pass coming. Hey, hon, you got a good view? Oh, that looks so cute. Full throttle, pulling away. Go up by your corner, please. Look at that climb out, guys. Pretty decent climb out. Not incredible, not like the A10. Very believable amount. Gear coming down. Oh, yeah. 
That disappears into the trees, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Very well behaved on the ground, folks. It's gonna roll out forever, though. One of these years, it's gonna stop. Good lordy, look at that. <laughs> I rolled out for like 800 feet, guys. This is 1,220 feet, right? Uh, yeah, something like that. 1,220 feet. Okay. On. Yeah. I need you to be back. I don't want to wonder where you are. Okay, thank you. Oh, car scared me. Okay, here we go. Oh, that thing looks so good. But man, it disappeared right now. No LEDs. I'm forgiving Horizon because it's so awesome. Oh, 85% throws, I forgot. Oh, that was a little scary. Okay, we're gonna land from the other direction, guys. You wanna trade sides, please? Thank you, go by the mailbox so you're safe. Speaking of safe. On, get there, get there. Deer coming out. Nice locked in feel. Oh my goodness, guys. And by the way, that is not safe. But that is a really long rollout. Man. I'm going to double back, go to the right, and then come back to the left here, camera crew. Okay. Oh, yeah, she'll make it around, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah. All right, let's taxi this thing for the people. Wow, the crown on the road, guys, this is hands off. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. One thing I'm noticing is I usually do a little bit of rudder. Uh, I do an aileron to rudder mix. And so what I do is when I need to make a minor adjustment, like a really, really fine tune adjustment on my ground handling, I'll cheat and use the ailerons, okay? That means I only get maybe, let's say 15% or 20% output on the rudder which means I can ground handle and just get that nice, that nice little bit to tweak it. This, I just like this plane a lot and it's making me nervous. And that kills me because I feel like it could do a little better if I was just a little bit less nervous. And uh, it is gorgeous, but you saw it here first. Wait, you didn't see it here first. It's been out for a long time. Maybe you saw it here first before some sort of a sale. I don't know. All I'm gonna say is this guys, this plane is sweet. If you don't have one, it is awesome. I have heard that this is better than the Viper Jet for short landings, okay? I'm gonna come out here and make an early prediction that even though I love this plane, it is gorgeous. The Viper Jet is, is easier to land. It's easier to land. This thing is rock solid though. Look at those gear. If this is a Viper Jet, it would have already broken by now. Okay, so let's cycle the gear. So as you can see, they're not broken. And I did not have perfect landings. I went out in the grass both times. I've just heard you can high alpha this thing with the best. And to be honest with you, that has not been my experience today because I feel like once you get into the high alpha, you're just like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just, my nerves are, my nerves are not gonna let it happen. They're just, it's not gonna let it happen. So CG point, 5,000 milliamp hour all the way back. Just so you guys can see this. That's probably why I can't high alpha on the back measurement and it's very nose heavy. So what, what you need to know is the 5,000 is probably, I'm gonna say a little big. Um, maybe if the receiver moved and you did a little bit of carving, you could possibly, uh, you might screw up the performance of the AS3X if you move this off center so you can slide the pack further. But I'll tell you what, it fits. Look guys. Look, it's open, it's it's hollow. Okay, you got a lot of extra depth there. Normally you don't get that. The Viper Jet, you're gonna be carving like crazy to make this thing fit in here. So, but can you complain with how beautiful this thing looks? And it looks really gorgeous in the air. Um, I'm gonna say this right now, not a good first plane. The safe <laughs> is, as I've mentioned before, safe on certain planes is really good. Um, 
the safe on this plane is kind of like you know afterthought time almost like you're if you're flying this thing on safe you need to have the world's hugest flight zone and you have to have some awesomely good eyes like binoculars strapped onto your face good because you are never going to see it after you make a turn um final thoughts beautiful gorgeous i hope you like the unboxing it's coming next guys you know check the link in the description below if you follow that link and you buy it you'll help our channel you really really will okay i'm just saying that because i want you to know it and we really appreciate your support the support really does help us to do more of this stuff mostly it uh, keeps my wife from murdering me in my sleep and uh that's a good thing because if i'm not flying she's not filming um and she <laughs> might might get caught since i have now said it no, don't do that. Don't do that. She orders my pizza. So we're good, guys. Come back for more. Stick around. We're going to unbox it. We're going to build it. We're going to show the setup. And uh, But I'll be honest with you. This thing was so easy to set up. You're going to love it. And by the way, in case you're wondering, don't grab it by the nose. You're probably going to drop a plane. Seriously. And you don't want to drop this thing. This is a perfect wall hanger. Isn't this? Don't you think this would look good like on the wall over the TV? At Esteban's house? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that would go there. <laughs> All right, we're trying that, the vertical test. <laughs> Not quite. Not on 5,000, but on 3,200, I bet she'd be flying right there. I'd be able to hold it with one finger. I was helping it along. Still, pretty impressive amount of power sounds great flies great on rails now all that needs to happen is we need to get into the setup for flapperons and any other strange things that come to mind <laughs> uh, <laughs> leading edge flaps just saying you i don't know it may not look like this after i'm done with it but it's gonna look pretty awesome until then <laughs> stick around guys okay so a couple things one i wanted to show you taxiing on grass this is on sod, so it's actually a pretty good representation of many fields because the fields are usually a little more well kept than where I rolled off. I'm at 42% uh, throttle there. Okay, this sod is only a year old and some change, but it does all right. There's actually a power cord I'm going to go over there. You got to be careful about nosing it over and tipping it over. And we were talking about one other thing on this plane. And that is if you buy this plane and you buy one pack, you are going to be really disappointed. Mm -hmm. You better get at least two. You might even need four. Um, if, if it was my money and I was doing this again, I'd be getting four 3200s for this plane. I would not get the 5000 for this plane. I get the 5000 for the P51. I get the 3200s for this. The 4000 was even yet a little bit big in my opinion. I felt like it handled. It was agile. It did everything I wanted it to right now on 3200. In fact, I might even go a little smaller if I could. The flight times are going to be pretty slow though. I mean, pretty short. Um, so that's, that's my two cents worth. And I'm just sharing that it's fully my opinion. If you like flying uh, bigger, heavier packs because the thing settles down a little better, uh, you can, but I'm telling you, you're going to have to carve to get that sucker back. So 3,200 all the way back into the, basically the wall right in front of the receiver with that little thing that the antenna comes out, you should be golden. Um, in terms of ground handling, beautiful ground handling. If I didn't already tell you, I put a couple of clicks of rudder in. I was just trying to figure out how to, how to get the trim right. And uh, I ended up taking them back out and it just taxis perfectly straight now. So also, wet grass cleans those wheels up nice. Those things worked great. Really mm -hmm. good. All right. You know what's next. The build. Stick around. YouTube. Ryan Phillips here. It's been a long time. I hope you saw the live event with Ryzen. That was pretty cool. Something new and exciting for me. Um, I never do live stuff, but it worked out well. Hopefully you were part of it. If you weren't, you can go check it out. But today we're gonna open this thing, which looks awesome. And you may already know what it is from the title and or the flight that already happened. One way or another, 
you're gonna figure it out really quick and I'm gonna be excited. This thing has been on my list for a long time and I have been dying to do it. And honestly, I'm gonna be doing this video and then it's gonna be sitting unused for a few weeks and it's gonna drive me crazy, but it's all for your enjoyment and pleasure. Goodness gracious, what is going on? I'm trying to be careful, I don't wanna screw up the box. Yes, it's the F-16! Thunderbird, 70 millimeter EDS. I can't wait to see this thing fly. I'm so excited. I've been waiting so long for you. I had the UMX and it was such a disappointment. <laughs> on the backs, they're usually the best. Not a very flattering angle for the F-16. Oh, it's awesome. I can't wait to fly this thing. It's gonna be so good. This is a bind and fly, as you probably already figured out. Obviously, this thing is gonna be a 6S bird, which is awesome. I think I'm gonna be flying this thing on a 5,000 million power smart pack, 30C, 6S. In fact, it's Topping off right now. I'm gonna put in like 40 milliamps in there so far. So that's gonna be done here shortly. Probably well before our unboxing, build, and setup ready. Video setup video is done. Wow, they don't mess around with space. Look at this, guys. That's the nose of the plane right there. I'm glad this wasn't shipped from Chino Land because I guarantee it would have had problems. Oh, and this is going to suck to get out. You need help? This rest box now is so tight. That does not seem like a very good idea. Here, the top of it's open. If you put it down, I'll pull. Oh, okay. You do. And I'll pull. Alright, we got it. Oh, so exciting. Horizon does such a good job on packaging their product that sometimes it's a little bit annoying to unbox. But to be honest with you, I've had worse. <laughs> In fact, I have a new one coming that you guys are going to love. I'm also going to love too. Alright, so regular box protection. This one got chewed up by the control arm on the bottom of this wing. Mm -hmm. No damage to the plane though. That's kind of an interesting way. See what they did there? They did their jig for painting. Oh. And then to make the, the feathers right, they put these white decals on there. That's, that's really actually kind of interesting and creative. Nice thick wing. It's not a very big wing guys, this is the whole wing. That's crazy. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. They got. I think it comes with metal, or not metal, it comes with missiles. You see the two carbon fiber rods there, guys? Mm -hmm. Just to show you, nice and sturdy. Very light, though, very light. It's like nothing to it. I'm really excited to see this thing go together. Got the instruction manual. It's on the top this time. Always have very good instruction manuals included. Oh, yeah. You know what that means, right? That Whoa. That's going to be broken. No, what I'm saying is it's a magnetically attached nose, which oh. is nice. So when it does get broken, you can replace it. That is super nice. Oh, yeah. That looks gorgeous. That's really nice. US Air Force Thunderbirds. Oh, man. I'm so excited to see this thing go together. Okay, we've got. Looks like the. Oh! Those are the vertical fins that go on the bottom. I was trying to figure out if they were like some sort of a winglet. I'm like, wait, there's mm. no winglet on an F-16. So obviously this is the other wing. Wow, look at that. Must be some wing joiner there. It's where the screw passes through. And then of course you got the carbon fiber entry point and then another wing joiner here. So again, not a very, not a very big plane so far. I mean, no fuselage looks big. Tail feathers. 
Ball joints, nice. Guys, ball joints. I can't say enough about balls. See that? <laughs> Who noticed? Carbon fiber rod. These things are really strong. Got the dihedral, or I guess there'll be an anhedral in there, because it goes down instead of up. Look for exciting. Got a decal pack here. Uh, what is it with Horizon and making me put stars all over them? That is super annoying. What the heck is this? That's weird. That is huh. weird. I don't know what that is. But on the F-16 UMX, if you ever bought that thing, you had to put, tediously put, like hundreds of stars on that thing. And it was like the worst part of that build. I hated that build because of that. Protective foam between the foam pieces. Horizon, you're the only ones that do that. Thank you. Uh, that's not true. Some other manufacturers do it. But you gotta get pretty primo for that. <laughs> this missile looks like it's not gonna be very deadly. <laughs> That's awesome though. I love the shape, I love the look. Of course you're not gonna have missiles on an F-16 that's in the Thunder, Thunderbirds. I think our battery's done. I think so. Oh, this second one's gonna be really hard to get out of here, guys. Look at this. It's Maybe. way down in there. I wonder if there's a trick to getting that out. Nope. Me. Oh. I just, just got to grab it from the front and the back. That's awesome. I kind of want to use the ordinance from the A10 on this because the ordinance is like way cooler looking. Of course, the scale is maybe not quite right. That's too bad. That would have been awesome though. I know you guys are waiting for this like patiently. Okay, we got a bag of fine plug, couple of screws, looks like four screws, and then two of these rods. Must go on the rudders. Okay, so this, this is stuck through all the way to the literal end of the face of the box, guys. In fact, it protrudes just a little bit fast. So if you get one of these things at the store and it's damaged on the end, get the other one, okay? Because it's <laughs> probably damaged. This thing is like way heavy in the middle, that's crazy. I mean, of course, like everything is in here. Oh, that looks so good. I love the flags up there. Oh man, these retracts are gonna be awesome. Look at this. That is so cool. I like that they've got pockets. They're simple. There's not a bunch of complicated landing gear doors. Of course, if there were landing gear doors, I would love it. This is a little bit strange. It looks to be a tail hook, but they don't use a tail hook on F-16s. There was some F-16s that were tested when the Navy was looking at them and uh, they did some testing, but they, they didn't ever go with them. Yep. The landing gear were not strong enough to support the carrier landings on the F-16. Um, at least I found that to be true. There's carbon fiber rod on the bottom, so don't forget to flip it over. Guys, you gotta flip it over and look for anything fun. Just cool. See this, hollow, hollow, all the way through. Man, that is really light. Feel that. There's like nothing to that's it. That's so crazy. weird. Okay, that's awesome. Definitely for the middle. Okay, so we have completely emptied the foam. So what we're gonna do is we'll clean up, we'll come back to the build. All right, folks, so we're gonna do the build series. Just wanna let you know, we're planning on flying with a 5,000 milliamp 6S30C Smart Pack. Uh, as you know, I've been making the transition over to Smart uh, from not Smart. <laughs> Um, real quick, we'll just show you what it looks like inside. Got the proverbial Velcro. We've got the EC5 connector, which is going to be perfect to mate up with the IC5. Of course, we're not going to have a smart technology on this connector. AR636B, this is not going to have the new uh, smart receiver in it. This thing was released just before that came out. Beautiful plane, no less. And uh, we should still have some telemetry to come back. So, speaking of smart things, I got a 3S here running this just as a test. Um, I'm gonna back out, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to servo test stuff. So, when servo testing, this is always a good idea when you have to glue things together like this, because it's very easy to make mistakes. So I used a Y cable, this makes it really easy to plug things in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here and it's just going to do a 
Whoops, sorry guys. Servo test. You can move it up or down or you can do fixed position. There you go. So you see how it's swiping back and forth. So I'm just gonna set that up and then I'm just gonna make sure my brown goes to brown. So now you can just confirm the condition is true. Everything seems to be right. So when that gets to center, you can just click, 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 click. Or you can do double click and it'll do a sweep, okay? So I want that to be in the middle when I'm done, so I'll go ahead and unplug that. And if you want this to go quicker, you can plug in everything simultaneously. You can also do your retracts and stuff, but I would be careful with retracts. Um, the only reason I'm testing this stuff is just for the simple fact that I don't want to find out later that something's not quite right. Plus, this also helps you to know where your throws are going to be. So, like, take note of that, guys. You see that? You don't want to overdrive this control surface because if you do, what's going to happen, camera crew? You're going to strip your servo. Well, eventually you will, but the thing is you're going to have to crush the foam first. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind, folks. Just going to do that for each of the three separate components just to make sure we don't have any issues. I'm sure we won't, but if we do, here we'll just double tap this one. So it's going to go through the sweep, which is pretty nice. You can also take an opportunity like this to tell if there's like weird noises or anything like that when it's separate from the rest of the system. Remember, this is, this is the tool that everybody should have one of. If it's not this brand, whatever, I suppose. But the thing is, this is pretty awesome. And you don't have to be using a smart pack to do this. You can do that with any pack. So uh, any pack that's got a regular adaptable balance charge lead. I think you have to plug in the discharge lead too. So either way, love this thing. Works excellently. I've been extremely happy with this. Even if you aren't using the smart technology yet, highly recommend it. Um, that's gonna save you a lot of heartache. So test your servos if you can. Okay, so the assembly on this is pretty straightforward with the exception of one step. And that is putting these vertical fins in that go on the bottom of the plane. We're just gonna talk about this now in case I forget and try to gloss over it later. Oops, goes this way, right? Yeah, goes this way. Okay, so when you glue this in, that's gonna be awesome for one thing, <laughs> but for two, it glues only in here, okay? Inside this pocket. Yep. Don't glue up here on that cheater hole area because if you ever need to get into the fan assembly, you're gonna undo these two screws and you're gonna be able to pull it out. Yep. So if you glue here, it's gonna stop you from getting in it's gonna stop you from getting in here to do maintenance on that fan. So only put the glue on this part. Well, it's actually, easy. you're gonna to wanna to put it here. Yeah. Because yeah. if you put it here, then it won't then drag. Then you know you get any extra. It won't drag out. So that's the key. And then people are gonna tell you to rough up the surface and all these different things. You can do that if you want. I don't, I don't care about that. Um, okay, so instruction manual. That's just to this, show you guys what's going on here. Okay. So. Find and fly. Okay. So obviously this is heavy enough that you're gonna have to do your drone registry if you're in the United States. Center of gravity is 90 to 110 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing at the fuselage. So as usual, Horizon, <laughs> you guys gotta be more specific about that. Where is the leading edge of the wing? Okay, where is that exactly? Is it here? I'm gonna go for here on this plane because there's that change in the swoop. But you gotta remember, once this wing is installed, there's not really a distinct difference there, okay? So on this one, I'm gonna go from the point of this back. But it would be really, really nice if you guys could be a little bit more clear on that. It's gonna save a lot of people's heartache. So they want us to start with the sub fins. So it says. Okay. So then also we have the computerized transmitter set up here, DX18. This is gonna be like the easiest setup ever. <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned because I, I wanna make sure that I have flaps. 
But as you know, on an F16, there is one main control surface on the rear, and that is the aileron that's gonna act as ailerons and flaps in real life. And then on the front, there is a leading edge slat or a slat, and the slat changes the shape of the wing just like the trailing edge flap changes the shape of the wing. So in really high alpha maneuvers in real life, the plane goes up and it prevents the separation that causes the stall by drooping, drooping this down. And then it allows the plane to fly in almost like a, just incredible angles of attack. So this is where we are, we're DX18. So we're gonna set this up. That can't be all of it. I know, that's crazy. That's, There's, no, that's, that's not rates all. rates and expo on the page before. Yeah, so we have to glue the fin in too. And then we have to do the missiles. I'm so torn, guys, because you and I both know that on an F-16, especially this particular F-16, that's the Thunderbirds, there's not gonna be missiles mounted, so I'm really thinking about maybe cutting the missiles off, even though missiles are cool. Um, so I'm not sure if I wanna do that yet, but if I'm gonna cut them off, I'm gonna use an X-Acto and just follow along that, and then uh, that's gonna be that. It's gonna be done and easy. But I'm a little bit concerned, maybe there's not quite enough strength and structural integrity in here that you'd have to throw in a piece of carbon fiber. I just don't want all that work. So we'll probably just screen and bear it with the missiles. There's four Phillips, uh, Phillips had machine screws. Those aren't Phillips. They are not. Yeah, they're hex. So you can see this is where that goes on. So this has safe select, guys. Um, since you can get to the bind plug, it shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, this does not have the push button like some of the newer ones, which is, to be honest with you, not a big deal. There's your CG. Safe select designation in and down. Same as what we're used to seeing. Here's your fan blade assembly. If you're doing plug and play, this is the way you would do it. I'm just trying to figure out if, if we have to do something special for flaperons. Because right now, I don't know if they have that set up and I want to answer that question before I go any further. Why would you chop your fingers off in this plane? Look where the fan is. You'd have to like work really hard to have your fingers in there. Because I mean, mm -hmm. unless you have small fingers, I suppose. But look how far forward it is, guys. Yeah, that's crazy. You're not exactly going to be sticking your hand in there. That's a big BEC and ESC, rather. Look how huge that thing is. That's awesome. I don't know how many amps that is, but it's got to be pretty big. So we're going to see, we're going to start gluing stuff together and come right back. Okay, so I had expressed some concern about flaperons, and yes, they are not set up by default, which is a big bummer. I feel like that's maybe a miss on this. Um, okay, so the way you can tell is you look at channel two. Channel two is hooked up to the ailerons, and it's hooked up via a Y cable. All right, so the Y cable obviously tells us that it's just on one channel and they're gonna operate in opposite directions. So not a big deal, but when we're all done with this, maybe I'll fly it stock and then I'll think about it. But if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do flat runs, I believe you have to use the programming cable. We're gonna have to take out that Y cable, bring the plugs together. Hopefully there's enough length on the cable and then plug them in there between channel two and between channel six. So channel two and channel six. And the reason we need the programming cable is because the AF3X is going to actuate one of the ailerons and not the other. The good news is, under normal circumstances, if you have AS3X and if you have a stable, properly flying aircraft, one aileron is going to be enough AS3X. You technically don't have to have the second one because both ailerons work together. Um, they aren't necessarily going to work exactly the same because depending on the position you are relative to the ground, relative to the wind, and things like this, there is going to be some level of impact. So you would need this if you wanted full control over both of those. But spoiler ons and flap ons on a plane like this would be pretty cool. And uh, if all goes to plan, I might do that. But I'm not sure. I haven't made up my mind. It should fly good stock, so we're going to see how it flies stock first, and we're going to go from there. Okay, so we're going to start by gluing these sub fins in. I guess I know they're called sub fins but they evidently are called sub-tins. <laughs> You're supposed to use CA, 
And so I don't think you have to use foam safe, but I have a foam safe. This is supposed to be thin. It's actually more of like medium now because it's getting old. Um, I also have this, which is mucilage. I can't find this anywhere right now, guys. It's kind of like golden. So I'm gonna use it for you. This stuff is harder and harder to get out of the bottle the older it gets and the crappier it gets. But I love this stuff. It's like my favorite type of adhesive for model airplanes. Yes, I know earlier I was just correcting my wife for telling me to not apply it to the fin, but I'm doing just that because that's how hard it is to get it out of the bottle right now. So once you apply this stuff, then ideally you're gonna spread it on both surfaces. I've had a few people that won't be named here suggest that foam tack is the same. I have foam tack in the bottles downstairs and I've used it maybe like three times. It doesn't work half as good as this stuff. It does work, it is kind of the same principle, but this stuff is way better. Okay, so now we're gonna try to lead in there. And slip it down in, okay? Now normally you would pull in and out. You can see it's already like tight almost, okay? That is why I like mucilage, because it works. And part of the reason is this stuff comes from China and uh, the only way you can import it is to break the rules. So maybe that's why they can't get it. See how hard it's coming out? If you get this stuff and you wanna actually make it work well and it's old, you can take a warm cup of water and stick it into the warm cup of water and it will change the viscosity greatly. So I'm gonna just try it the way the my wife and I read, okay? Q-tips, my favorite toy. Let me just spread this around. Just get it on surfaces. Not all the surfaces are going to want to take it because of the shape and nature of the Q-tip. So, dumb question. Yeah. You can't use, like, kicker with mucilage, no, right? No, kicker will actually break down the mucilage. So, like, if you get mucilage on this material here, you could actually use kicker to unglue it. Uh, the problem is this paint will break down with mucilage. So you got to be a little bit careful about that. So I'm going to roll this kind of in. See how I did that at an angle, folks? Okay, so once that's in, you can hear that. See how tight that is already? Yeah. I mean, I could practically pick up the flame by that. So the reason I love that stuff is because I'm always in a hurry. And um, you can tell from my three-hour videos. <laughs> but what I was saying was, when I do a repair on the fly, because I just crashed something, this is my go-to because it is fast, it is effective, and it holds strong. And in three or four weeks, it's still gonna be strong. It's not like it's gonna lose its hold. Um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with CA. CA is fine, but it is quite a bit more brittle connection. So CA, kicker exacerbates that. Um, but I use kicker 100% of the time when I'm using CA anymore. I still have time. Um, by the way, I was reading the manual and it suggested a 4,000 milliamp pack. So I also have a 4,000 milliamp 6S pack. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly on both. If we can make the 6,000 CV out, that'll be great. If it doesn't, the 4,000 milliamp 6S, uh, in this case, uh, 50 C pack is gonna be really juicy. So I'm excited for that. Looks like this charge is done. So we can stop that. This of course is the pack. So you can see the difference in size. It's not like a huge difference in size but it's definitely, there is a little extra thickness to the five. There's a little bit extra height and there's a little bit extra length. So it's bigger. It's also gonna be higher. All right, so we have the fins glued in. Um, I guess this, this part we could probably do at any time. That's, that was hard. This <laughs> assembly is gonna actually be super easy. We did another video recently, the Timber, the Night Timber X, awesome plane by the way. And it just was complicated. <laughs> this thing is actually really simple. I'm surprised it's so simple. Usually jets are not simple. Okay, so we'll do the radio setup when this is all done, by the way, just so you know. We've already tested the surfaces that were separate from the main body, so we're not so much concerned. Okay, so they're suggesting that you CA in the vertical stabilizer, uh, vertical fin. They have it labeled as rudder here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this, this towel and I'm gonna build up the thickness just a little bit more in the middle. And then this just gives a pocket for those things to sit. Okay, so that's perfect. Now this 
Horizon has very graciously added some clips on this. I like that. Thank you, Horizon. See how there's brown? The brown is going to line up with the brown side, okay? The other day when I was building that A10, um, which for you guys, it's going to be quite a while ago when you're, by the time you're seeing this video. See how that goes, guys? The, um, somebody in the camera crew forgot to warn you in one of the halls that he was, <laughs> that he was plugging in a wire completely backward. I need a pay raise for that. It's all right, because I was able to, <laughs> after just hours off. of troubleshooting, figure out that I had plugged it in backward. It's all part of the show, though, guys. The funny thing is, the CA broke free clean. I got so lucky. See how hard I'm squeezing this? I'm worried it's going to, like, it Sometimes you'll blow out the end. Sometimes, I mean, if you squeeze it hard enough, it'll just pop right in your hand. hand. It's awkward. Especially if she's watching you do it in her kitchen. Yeah. So, I have some explaining to do. Yeah, I was just gonna say, maybe she'll join you. Mm. <laughs> Is that a no? Jeez, that was pretty premature rejection. <laughs> Man, I don't know if you guys can tell how hard I'm squeezing that. It's hard. In not a fun kind of way. Yes, it's. Our, oh, yeah, buddy, we had an air bubble in there. Okay, I have had it blow up in my hand before. That's why I'm cringing. Do you, do you remember that? That's fun. Was that when you glued your fingers together? I didn't glue, I glued my fingers together many, many times, but it wasn't from that. No, I glued my fingers together when I was building lots of planes, but I blew up the, the tube of this mucilage when I was putting the flaps on the P47 UMX. Mm. Yep, that was at our old house, obviously. So, I've got that just at the bottom. And I have plenty that I can spread it onto the sides. The way you're supposed to do this, guys, when this is brand new, it comes out like butter. It's super smooth. And you just goop it in there and goop it on both sides of the surface that you want to make together. Um, so much like other contact adhesives. And uh, CA, CA is a lot easier. It's a lot faster than this. Even when this stuff is flowing like butter, CA is easy. But like I suggested, I just like the more, somewhat more permanent feel, tackiness, and it just gets in there and goes. So that being said, Horizon, if you're listening, reach out to China. <laughs> and if you could just ask for some of this mucilage, that'd be great. I'm sure it's probably illegal. So you probably can't have it. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a small bead of it here. Quality control pass. Did you see that, guys? That's good. Okay, so we're just gonna see how it gets so stringy, folks. That's what this stuff does. Okay, so the cool thing about this mucilage is you're supposed to let it cook. And when I say cook, I mean you're supposed to let it set up for a second. It's like if you spread it in there and just stick the two components together, you're actually cheating. I do it all the time, of course, but technically it's gonna be most effective if you spread it and then you let it dry a little bit and then you tack it together, okay? Verifying my colors, orange to orange, brown to brown. Yep, okay. Now I want this to sit flat and I want the wire to go into the hole. Hun, hmm? give them a good shot of it going in the hole. Did you, did you get that? Hey, just careful. Jeez, it's a kid show. No, it's not. Not, <laughs> not a kid show. Not a kid if show. If you're a kid and you're watching this, stop it. You should not be watching. They're watching me play with toys somewhere else. Yeah. Seriously, this is not marketing to kids. This is marketing to adult children. Okay. Yes. Just wanted to make sure that was true. Just adults who play with toys, not kids who play with toys. That's right. Okay, looking for 90 degrees. Would you say that's 90 degrees? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. I don't know how you could get it in there any other I don't really either. The molding is so tight, which yeah. is good. I mean, if it's not tight, I don't want it. Nose cone held in place magnetic food. Okay, so now we need to put the carbon fiber spar and we got to put the wings on. I mean, guys, this is a very straightforward model. Are you doing the tail first or not? Don't you care? Oh, you know what? I skipped that part. That's why you take directions. 
person that does. Apply glue here, okay? Don't glue them in backward, folks. That would be bad. I mean, if you know what this plane looks like, they go downward a little bit, okay? Like that. So if you put them in backward, they're not gonna fit. Except that they do. Ooh, they do. So you don't wanna so do don't. them backwards, you're gonna <laughs> have problems. So don't do that. All right, so we're gonna get this stuff squished out. Hmm, this probably would have been easier the last step because the tail wouldn't be in the way. Too bad your wonderful host made a mistake. Oh, seriously. That's oh, terrifying. It pops. It's gonna be kind of awkward. Okay, so this time you wanna glue the top of the surface here because there's a wire going right here. So I'm just gonna predominantly get glue on this surface here. And I'm just gonna kind of do that, okay? So you'll notice that I have the top of the surface. I don't see any embedded hinges. So this is just a pinch hinge. It's unfortunate, but true. Pinch hinges are not my favorites. Okay, so that's, that's going in there just fine, like totally fine. And I'm just squishing it up into this. So on the real F-16, this thing deploys up. X is an air brake, which is pretty sweet. I'm just holding it in position. Now I'm gonna pull it out and then we'll push it back. That's the beauty of mucilage. Now I wanna double check something before we get too far. I'm actually gonna put this on just so it plugs the wires in. That works beautifully, guys. The P-51, we had some problems with the hatch on the lid, which is a little bit annoying, but uh, it's a pencil plane for having a hatch issue. But it was uh, forgivable because that plane is so awesome. You'll notice that I could probably get some glue in here. A little bit more glue. Glue would be good. I think I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on the glue. It's not gonna hurt it if you have to pull it off as long as the thing comes off. Some of them don't, especially after you've got a lot of mucilage on there. I literally have some new tubes of this somewhere. I gotta go find it. Home you do? Oh. Yeah, because this is getting really hard to use. See that? But I'm telling you, this stuff is so good. Like as a kid, it reminds me of rubber cement. And I know I've told you, if you guys have seen one of my videos, you've seen all of them, you know. <laughs> we do the same thing, we just do it on different planes. And people like routine, I like routine. People that are into RC airplanes like to learn something and then use it for a while. It's always good to learn new things, but. I have it hiding somewhere in some box. So you'll notice it's shooting out a little bit now. Gosh, I know. That's crazy. I mean, I can definitely hold up the plane yeah. by that joint now. And that's within seconds without kicker, obviously, because kicker would unglue it. So the other thing too is it gets, it gets really sticky on there. So like if you have, if it gets on your fingers, you can roll it off, which is super nice. Gosh, you would think I'm trying to sell the stuff you can't even buy. I feel bad for you people. It's like, look how awesome this product is. You can't get. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just spread that over here just because we're a little bit short on it. And it's kind of a scarce commodity these days. Now that I've talked it up, Ryzen, if you're listening. Still no. Still no. Negative. You're not going to be listening for a while at least. We're pre filming this. That's something we never do, too. No, never. Okay, so basically that's what I'm doing is I'm rolling it and it'll take all semblance of extra glue off of the surface, which is super nice. Okay, whoops. Except for the spot that you miss and then it won't take that off. Be careful though, because this will sometimes pull paint. Not because there's some chemical reaction, just because it's physically strong connection, so it's gonna pull the paint, potentially. Okay, now. Check your angles. Oh yes, that's a good angle. Um, here in a little bit, we'll be actually putting those controls on, which is gonna be awesome. Would you please warn me if that plane acts like it's gonna fall down? Yeah. I'll be like playing with my, you know, yeah. get this out. Over there squeezing your tube and not paying attention. Yeah. Don't believe it. Be squeezing it like crazy. See, I didn't offer. 
It's like not standing by you when you do that. Hey, listen, if it blows up all over the place, it's just going to be on your your blanket here. Great. The one with the hole from the P51 Can you pull my hole back together? Maybe. We can try. For those of you who didn't see that video, I don't know if we filmed that part. I don't know if we did either. I don't think we filmed that part, but I was testing the prop or something, and it caught the edge of this particular blanket and put a hole in it. And it was like brand new when you did that. It was like brand new. <laughs> it was like a couple weeks old. So I tried to pretend like I didn't notice that I had caught a giant hole in it, and she knew it the whole time. She was just trying to be nice. Maybe it was on camera. I don't remember. Because why else would you try? <laughs> okay here we go all right so we've got that all gooped on there gooped on sounds like somebody's name yeah it Actually, is there's, the name. there's probably like gooped on's watching live you might want to be careful about what you say today i told caleb that the screw was a phillips head screw mm -hmm. and he goes no it's my screw I realize that's our last name, but it's also the name of the screw. Royalty free. Yep. Okay, so I'm just doing just a real light coating this time. You'll notice I switched things up on this wing, and I just went ahead and glued from the other side. Like I said, it's always fun to switch things up and just try different directions. See where it fits best. Does that go along with your love of routine? Yes. Routinely checking different holes positions okay, here this goes so one thing about mucilage is that when you press the parts together sometimes you'll press the parts together and you'll get this slow retraction so if you have something that's that's stuffed in a hole I'm serious <laughs> it might slowly push out and you need to be prepared for that so like if you're gluing a wing into a wing box for instance you may have to tape it, okay? Seriously. Jeez, camera crew. <sighs> Always take it there. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, seriously though, this this is just on three sides, so it doesn't seem to be as bad. But guys, look at this. See how strong that is already? And that's been like 10 seconds. And a year and a half worth of being opened. Mm -hmm. Look. 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 It's not moving at all. No. So, if you fly that and it rips off, check for CA. <laughs> hey, also, where I glued, I wanted to point something out to you folks that I just noticed. If you check with me here, camera crew, there is this devoid here where they left an opening recess for the wire to go through. What I am noticing is that I'm going to take some scissors and cut the tip of my Q-tip off. I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do to remedy this problem. Okay, since there's no contact point there, there's not really any use. Not really any use in having this glue right here. Because it's just going to make it a lot harder to take that wire out later. So I'm just um. going to spread that and then spin. Okay. Yeah, I didn't notice that at first. Sorry, guys. I kind of mentioned that I wasn't going to glue there, and then I was like, yeah, I'll try to get some glue in there. Yeah. So, as you can see, that contact adhesive works really good. All right, what's next? Um, now I think we can do the wings. Now we're supposed to do the wings. We're not supposed to put the control arms on yet. I don't think so. I don't know. Ian doesn't think that we need elevators, so... You know, why do we even need those things? I'm just gonna put flaps and leave jet. the elevators out. This is good. Even if you're watching, which I'm sure you're not, don't worry, we got this under control. He's gonna die in the filming of this video. But I'm not. We hope. Okay, so carbon fiber spar, then wings in. Guys, seriously, don't rub your hands along this. Because that's what you told me the other day before you do it in my hand. Just, just be careful. Somebody that will not be mentioned by name by the camera crew um, was grabbing a 
shaft the other day. <laughs> and she, I, seconds before, had warned her that these fiberglass rods would, would stab you, like with fiberglass. And uh, so, like I said, I wouldn't name her, but uh, she might be in the room filming right now. You moved it. Immediately grabs wow. one of these shafts and get a huge shank, like prison style shank in her like hand. Five of them. It was really bad. Was and bad. of course we were in the midst of a huge argument too. So it didn't go very well. So and you were super helpful. It was, it was like, it was awesome. Good times, good times guys. So real quick. Just to be clear, there's some extra wire in here. Can you give him a shot of this hole? Um, I don't know. Hey, did you check your color code? I did. I yeah. double checked it. Brown is to the left. Yep. But you see how there's some excess in there? Yeah. I'm serious law being careful about this because those, okay, this is accessible. Why am I so worried? Guys, it's not glued. <laughs> mm. If I end up putting flap rounds on here, I need to know that I can get this oh. to yeah. reach. So that was the whole rationale behind that little exercise and stupidity there. So you see what I'm doing there? I'm trying to get that aileron label to go into the hole. Oh, for goodness sakes. Yeah, help me just on that side there, camera crew, so I can push against you, yeah. push hard. Thank you. You see what I did? That aileron label had to get tucked into the hole. Okay, it's in. Uh, did the screws go in from the bottom? Yes, they go in from the bottom. We have a screw sack here. I'm just gonna pop this open. This is like the easiest build ever. Actually, the P51 was pretty stinking easy too. Yeah, it was. Considering we the surprised. complexity and the cost of that plane, yep. that plane went together really easy. I think my nerves are gonna be better for this, but at the same time, like this this size class is one of my favorites. This is That's like a, lot of a 70 millimeter EDF speaks to the size of the, the EDF fan, but this plane is probably about a 1.2 meter plane, if that. If that. The, the A10 is a twin 64 millimeter, but it looks like the ducted fan housings could have been a little bigger. So it's almost like they planned on having 70s and they were like, let's use the 64s because we can get better performance or more money out of there or whatever it is. Um, it's awesome, by the way. If you had had 70s in there, that thing would have been crazy. It already yeah, is crazy. Yeah, it's already crazy. We'll go 110 miles an hour. Hey, if people have hex screws in their pack, that was a 5 64th Allen wrench. But it's thingy. probably actually metric. Can it probably just is. just grab the 5 64ths? Yep. But if you oh. only have a standard. Horizon occasionally does use imperial measurements on their screws. Meaning. What? Is that because we live in imperial. The United States? No, imperial as in know. British. Oh, get in there, you turd. What am I caught on? Oh, and oh. I never push it all the way through because we got distracted talking about your shaft stroking. Okay, so we have nice clips on these again, but you'll want to make sure that those clips don't distract you from making full deep penetration. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Don't get excited and forget to stick it all the way in there because I almost forgot just now. Seriously. Seriously, camera crew, I almost forgot. Okay. The aileron cable is not going to give me problems here. What's giving me problems is I'm having a little bit of an alignment issue with this. I think. What am I doing wrong? Uh, okay. Sometimes the first or second time stuffing it in gets a little bit complicated. By the way, I was a little bit off put on this model by not having a full functioning. Um, uh oh, stabilator. Sorry, I almost <laughs> forget what we call them. Um, a full functioning stabilator as opposed to an elevator. But my understanding is that the planes that are in this size class end up just basically not doing well because the stabilators don't like to stay intact. But I, I don't know. I tend to think that the model makers are just, it's too expensive. 
or that makes them far enough that they don't have to pay royalties or so I don't know why, why they do it. I want a full functioning stabilator if I'm picking it. But this one but flies so good that I am really, really excited to see it fly. That is a minor issue, by the way, folks. It does seem to be kind of a thing, though. Because there, there was, they have, I think, I, I don't know if it's Freewing or FMS. One of them has a full functioning stabilator, but I don't know if it's in the 70 millimeter size class. I think their V3 has this instead of that. So there must have been some mechanical issue that they ran into. You know what's nice about these? They're not 4 million turns long. <laughs> The P51 had the oh, four yeah. million turns in there. They were really sunk in there. Oh yeah, they go forever. Why do they have a hole in there? Oh, that is so nice. Horizon, seriously, kudos. Look, there is a hole machined to be able to get to the set screw on that. That's the way it should be, and yet it's never that way. Is this where we put the totally not scale missiles? The other thing I noticed about this plane and many of the F-16 models, so these just go in and slide back. Ooh, is there a left and a right? I don't think so. I just don't want to rip the missile off. I'm sure you don't. Hey, seriously, like, what are... I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't see any there's indication just... that Check there's a left out. and right. I don't think there is. I don't think there is any difference. But I'm just saying, like, oh my goodness. It made me nervous. The other thing is, in looking at uh, documented pictures of the Thunderbirds, they will sometimes fly drop tanks. But I think the drop tanks might just extend their range so that they can get to and from sites. There it goes. I think the plastic was just a little bit tight on the tolerances mm -hmm. there. Okay. I was about to talk about this, and I didn't get to it. Man, that thing looks so good. Wow. That is so good. The pilot is a little bit big. Not like Alpha Titus head from, was that a free wing A-10? Yes. Where so the that head was like 10 times yes. the size of a normal human mm -hmm. head. F-16 pilot would be a little bit smaller than that in real life. But that guy's not bad looking. It's, it's not a right looking pilot. It could be better, but it's all right. I can live with that. I prefer a light pilot because I don't want to waste a bunch of weight on a pilot head. Looks like it's the same pilot head with just a different paint job. Mm -hmm. I prefer the paint job in this A10 over this this blue yeah, and yellow. Yeah, the blue and yellow. The guy's got like a favorite. scarf on. Like what? It's Why is cold. he wearing a scarf? It's cold up there in space. In sp <laughs> <laughs> it's a spaceship. <laughs> um, oh man, this thing is so good, guys. It's so good. I cannot wait to see it in the air. All right, we were debating about this earlier. We were? Yes, we were. This is part of the build, so we'll go ahead and... Oh, we we're talking about yep. the decals. decals. So the decals, Horizon, sometimes they are better than other times on stuff like this. We gotta do the linkages first. This is not a radio setup. This is, this is gonna be... Oh, now. yeah. So we'll do this first, and then we'll come back to the decals. I, why didn't they mention this earlier? They didn't even mention it. Huh. Whatever. I'm just going to do it now, but i got to find the holes. Uh, okay, I the camera crew, see. just for the sake of comfort of the viewers, why don't you run around to this side? We have the uh, Mother Nature providing the lighting. They're recommending on the elevator that we go from the... This is already in normally inside the plane, but on this one you have to pick outside and outside. That's a little bit tempting to go. Um, the other day I felt so bad, somebody had to correct me on my Sport Cub S video because I said something totally backward. I said move the linkage to the outermost hole for the most output. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's so dumb. Oh. I totally said it backward, and it was on a beginner video, so now everybody's going to think that. And they're like, ooh, what's wrong with this video? I felt so bad after I realized I had said it wrong, so of course I like liked this comment or hearted it or whatever happens. So I tried to get it to go to the top. 
Um, you'll notice I did the throttle too. I think it actually needs to go the other way. See how that's kind of wanting to resist? I think this needs to be rotated the other way, possibly. Man, that's going to be a real bear cat to do if you have to. Really? Does it say on there? Um, they say, oh, of course they don't show the picture. See, these ones are sideways, guys. My concern is, you see how that's sideways? So that's not an issue, right? But back here, because the servo control arm is sticking out sideways, and this manipulates a surface that goes up and down like this relative to the servo control arm, that thing really kind of needs to be the other way. It needs to be coming in from the bottom. And then once it's under the bottom, then as this moves, it won't have a tendency of wanting to pressure this. Am I overthinking this, camera crew? Well, probably, but... I mean, do you understand how, what I'm saying? Yeah, Is, am I crazy? get it in that hole in that direction? Very carefully. I don't think it's going to like that. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to grab a, a pair of Nippon Lowe's pliers first. <laughs> the Nippon needle, the Lowe's pliers will give me the ability to hang on to this while I spin... while I spin this out. Hmm. If I don't have something to hold it against, it's going to be very difficult. Sometimes I'll do this beforehand if I think about it. I'm just going to work it back and forth a little bit. You'll be surprised. Hey, don't roll your eyes at I'm me. I'm not rolling my eyes. This is actually a really good idea. Pursing my lips. <laughs> so what's, what's going to happen is if you try to do that here, it's not like it's necessarily going to break it off right away, but look how hard it is to turn at first. Mm. So if I turn it a couple of times and just like work it, then it's gonna be easier to adjust once it's mounted on the plane. On there. So it's a little bit easier on your equipment. The equipment that you don't want to fail while you're flying. So I'm just gonna get these fairly close. You see how there's a difference? This one's only mm -hmm. got like three threads exposed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get them the same. Doesn't really matter what the setting is, I just want them to be the same for left and right, because it's easier to do this here than it is to do it on the plane. See how there's a flat spot there? So I'm just getting those things lined up. Okay, it looks like this one needs to come out just like one more half turn, maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe a one more. That looks pretty stinking close, doesn't it? Yep. Wait, maybe I was right before. There you go. Pushing it up against the fence. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's even. Um, that doesn't mean it's right. It just means that they're even, so I have the same starting point. So how are you going to put that in there? Well, I mean, I can take off the control arm. If I take off the control arm, that allows me to mount it like this. But no matter which direction we go, it's going to still have some mechanical binding. Because when this pushes full up elevator, you're going to get to a position where this, it's going to be kind of bound up here and it's going to want to mm -hmm. twist the control arm or twist the control arm. But if it's the other way, aren't you still going to have that same problem? Yeah, but it's just going to be to a lesser degree. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's worth screwing with. We're just going to do it this way. I'm sorry, guys. That was a whole lot of talk for nothing. It's wow. Favorite, it's your favorite thing to do. It Waffle. is. Listen, waffles are good, okay? <laughs> one more half turn. So we did one full turn, correct, camera crew? Yeah. So one full turn. Oh man, that's gonna hurt. I'm gonna let you take the brunt of the pain. Yeah. What? You're concerned I'm gonna break this? Yeah. Well, so am I. Because when this breaks and it doesn't fly, I got one half on. There we go. We're in. Okay, so we got to come out two halves, also yeah. known as one. So yes. there's one half, there's two halves, also known as one. Now I'm going to grab this so it's flush. What the heck? You see that? Making sure this is glued, making sure this is glued. Grabbing it, it's flush at this point. In order to be flush at this point, it should be the same number of turns, correct? Maybe the servo is just not quite. I'm going to just go out another half a turn. I'm going to just go out another half a turn. What the heck? 
See this, the geometry is just ever so slightly different. I don't like that. Yeah, you're out like at least a whole nother. I'm out two. Then on this one. Two additional. Yeah. But also look, it's like sticking out further. See, it's coming out at an angle. See? This one's gonna be out like that, and that one's perfectly square. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's not, I mean guys, this is, we're getting into the weeds a little bit, I realize, but the idea is if you don't have your elevators at the same position, it's going to cause you a problem. You wanna know what the problem is, camera crew? Or do you know what the problem is? Tell me the solution to the problem. Oh, the solution? Yeah, what's the solution to that problem? See if you've been paying attention in these last oh, 10,000 hours. I know. I'm gonna give you you can't trim that out, can you? It's gonna tip. Even at neutral flight, one's gonna be higher than the other and it's gonna induce a roll, one way or the other. ES3X is gonna to attempt to Im impair that to a degree. If you have safe on, it's gonna impair it, okay? But when you go to do a maneuver, then the maneuver will always veer one way or the other, depending on what direction it goes. And when you veer, it's gonna veer the opposite way when you veer down. So it's very important to have those true, especially on a complex wing like this, because the wing goes down in a way, okay? So you wanna make sure those things are nice and flush and even. And I don't even know if we have it yet. Let's look at it from this end, guys. This is, this is one of those planes where you really gotta get this right. Oh, Excuse I just you. got missile. <laughs> so call me crazy, but this one's still high. Yeah, definitely. Okay. You know what? That's because this one got twisted out twice and that one didn't. That got twisted out once. Yay, now my favorite part. Now I get to try to take this ball joint off. I'm gonna show you another trick, guys. Pause it. You ready for the trick of the day, guys? Craftsman, also known as Mexican. Chinese, Chinese. Sometimes the Chinese screwdrivers are the best. I'm serious, they come from China because they come with an airplane. So, in this case, if you ever have one of these ball joints and you want to take it off, sometimes it's way easier to just undo the control arm. You know that you're going to go back to the center position, so it's not a big deal. Remember, these are keyed. It's not like you have infinite positions you can put it in. It's just like one and then the next and one and the next. Did that make sense? Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is rather than take this off, which is very challenging and painful sometimes, I am going to instead pop this off. Oh man, of course it's gonna be hard for me. Okay, so now that's off. Now that that's off, I can extend this out, is what we were doing, right? Mm -hmm. Or oh, wait, was that pointed up? You gotta be kidding me, it was pointed up, wasn't it? I would say review the footage, but I don't want you to review the footage. Yeah, not yet. So that's one half, and that's one. So we'll just pop it back on loose, no screw, and we'll try. Okay. Looks like a Metal Gear servo, that's sweet. Oh, it's a, it's a smart Spectrum. Does it look like they're even? It's better. Man, I'm gonna get like poked in the eyeball by this thing. I think it's better. I think it's good. I think it's good. I think we're good enough. We're good enough to fly. So now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw back in. The Chinese screws seem to work the best on this. I didn't try the others, but it did work in. So guys, um, that is a 70 amp ESC, just so you know. That vertical fin is ridiculously huge. You see how it turned at the end? Mm -hmm. No big deal, as long as it gets back to home position. Now that's the first thing we're gonna check after we check a million other things. We're gonna make sure that uh, we have that right. Okay, so the build is not done because we neglected to do stickers. Now we looked up some images and the images are probably copyrighted so I can't show you. <laughs> but I can look at them and then come back in to this room. So the numbers evidently go on the bottom. On the scoop part. Don't hold by the nose. Oh yeah. Okay. For seriously, I'm afraid I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I know. It makes me quite nervous actually that I'm gonna forget and do that on accident. Mm -hmm. Thing is, the tail having empty, which is 
to go on aircraft. So my wife suggested four or six. <laughs> I won't tell you. So you're going to pick a different number? No, I won't tell you. Don't put it on reasons. upside down. I'm putting it on upside down because the plane is upside no, down. No, I know. That's what I meant. But they put these things on upside down too because they do a lot of upside down flying and it's cute. I, I don't and so my reason for picking four and six wasn't cute, but upside down flying is cute. Yeah, Jeez. pretty much. <laughs> Such a man. I'm impossible. <laughs> so this is, this is going to be right about here. Are you yes, doing? Yeah. You see that technical way how I got out the measuring tape and did mm -hmm. all that? That was impressive. You know what would be actually kind of sweet is, nah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it on scale. I was going to say I could use the star for the CG mark, which we do need to make the CG marks before we go into radio mm -hmm. setup. All right. Look at the box for this. One, two, three. There's actually four. So they gave us like 4,000 stickers, so we sure hey, don't have to use all of them. The big ones are the four. Oh, dang it. I hate when you're right all the time. I think you'd be used to it by now. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Rip it. Get out of there. Stars sometimes are the worst decals because they like to stay on the backing. Yeah, we're not going to film this part. We're going to pause it, and then we'll just come back when it's done. Many, 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 many hours later. <laughs> it's surprising. We were talking about how much of an impact these, like, decals actually make a big difference. I, I don't want to admit it because it's kind of a pain, and I just don't want to do them. I was like, ah, I'll just leave them off. It's still going to be awesome. And it would, I mean, you're not going to see that in the 20-plus feet, 80 miles an hour, you know, you're not going to see it, but it's still going to be, I like it. I think it makes it look more scale. If you put the decals on, peel them off of the backing, like as a unit, and then pop the little stars out. Yeah, take the whole back and cut up the sections and just yank the whole thing out. And you can even cut in toward the, the small stars are kind of weird shaped. Show them that. They yeah. aren't actually correctly shaped. They're not totally star. Which shaped. is weird. And I think the reason that is, is because the way that the decals apply, to the irregular surfaces cause them to look weird. So they yeah. gave us like weird ones and they gave us real like regular symmetrical stars. The symmetrical stars are supposed to go on the flats and then the ones with the irregular length arms on the stars, I don't know what you call those Points. Things. Huh? Points. Points, yeah, points, there you go. Then they actually go on the curved surfaces. Okay, so we got CG figured out. So if you're on page 11, this is a new pin. On page 11, the center of gravity here, it's uh, located from 80 to 110. That'd be 90. 90 to 110 millimeters. Thank you, storm crew. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you the trick I've used in the past. This is a fairly flat wing, so we could probably get away with doing it the easy way. I'm gonna do it the hard way just because that's the way I like it. So we're gonna mark on a piece of paper from the edge, starting at zero. We're gonna go out to 90. This pen is like so dark. 111, okay? So that's our CG range. I'm just gonna cut this strip of paper and then load it back into the printer. <laughs> just, Great, thanks. Just, <laughs> that's why my papers are always missing corners. Um, so now I can just take this and I can wrap it along the irregular surface of the wing. See, I've just got that lined up. I can make two small dots, okay? So I've got two small dots. Now I can take and run this back in the same scenario. We're just gonna make two small dots and then really Depending on the plane, you're going to want to mark your CG potentially in different ways. 
I always try to mark the range. But really what's gonna happen is I'm gonna figure out how the battery fits and then I'm gonna mark the battery cavity. Because really, especially on a jet, you know, where you've got really fairly expensive batteries and you know what you're gonna be using on it, I get the battery set and I don't mess with it. And if I need to go back, I know you're gonna think I'm a nut job, but I have a box of manuals and it's getting very big. So We know you're a nut job. We do. So being that the manual suggested using a 4000, I think we're going to actually start with the 4000 and then also fly with the 5000. So as per typical, we are going to open up the canopy, verify positioning and if it's going to fit. So if you want to come around here, can we so they gave us the high quality straps on this one. That is super nice. The straps in what plane suck? The carbon V cub. Well, no, were those good? Or no, that yeah. has the battery. That has the tray. No, what was horrible was, yeah, the carbon Z cub was awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I do not like the danglies next to the battery. What I'm going to do is this is supposed to be a diversity antenna, folks. So what's going to happen is this one needs to be 90 degrees compared to this one, okay? That's what diversity. So you want 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees. It doesn't matter what axis you pick, but there's, there's three axes and you wanna hit two of them at 90 degrees, okay? This is the easiest way I've found. This always seems to work. Obviously you don't wanna use like some fiberglass embedded or carbon fiber tape, something that's gonna stop the radio signal. But I'm just gonna grab this throw the tape over it and it's to be honest with you putting the antenna right next to the battery is about the worst place you can put it um, because the amount of material in the battery is is pretty significant so you're not going to get great signal through it I don't like that positioning at all because you see what's going to happen is this when that battery slides back you're going to be limited on your placement because of that little stupid mm -hmm. bump it would have been nice, Horizon, if you'd have scooch that back a quarter inch just so that that tray was there. And I'm going to just walk that back actually just a hair more. So now that we've got that positioned, I'm actually going to go in there with some more tape and just really go to town and just hold that exactly where I want. Because it's already bad enough to put batteries in some of these planes. Jets seem to be notoriously Jets are the, the worst. worst. They're always like really challenging to get batteries in just because the other thing is when you put the retracts down the planes don't like to sit on their retracts they're not well behaved when they're uh, empty meaning there's no battery in there they like to do this they go mm -hmm. like that and so you're lowering it down and then when you let go it lifts up it's just complicated you want to try to give it the best chance of success and in this case my antenna slipped out a little bit from the tape, so I'm just gonna force that back in. And then the other antenna is much simpler. I know you guys are probably wondering, why do you always tape? You take your tape and you cut the end. Why don't you just rip it off? Oh man, I did a horrible job there. The reason I do it that way is because when you get these little edges like this, these rip edges, if you tape like this, and then later on you have to get that off, what'll happen is you'll end up having tape rip like that. And that drives me crazy, especially on foam, because it likes to, the mold release sits inherently on this stuff. By the time we're playing with it, there's still a little bit of mold release. And it just drives me nuts, because as soon as you go to pull that paint off, or that tape off, it's gonna come off and it's gonna rip in half. Just mark my words, especially on UMX planes where you have to tape the joint all the way down the fuselage when you open them up. Sorry, I'm fighting this antenna. I, I kind of pulled it a little bit and so it popped out. Okay, so you can show the people here how that looks. Let me see this. Mm -hmm. So that's nice and out of the way. And then when I'm putting the batteries in, I don't have to fight it. 
this out. Okay. So this is a 4,000 milliamp. So we got the soft and we've got the firm. So hook and loop. Jeez. This is the good strap style. I'm very happy about that. One of the things I did when I got these uh, smart packs that I have never done previously is I actually started like taking advantage of the Velcro. I can tell you guys the Velcro makes it a lot easier because you just, this works better. Okay, so you just kind of got to throw caution to the wind a little bit when you first start because you got to start somewhere, right? So I just pretty much put it right on the middle of that Velcro. Oh no, it doesn't want to pull, probably got glued. I want to leave that up so it's easy to get out because I am more than certainly going to have to adjust this. Yeah. So put that in. Okay, we've got these points. And to be honest with you, they're almost enough of a bump that I can feel, so I'll pause it and I'm going to get a tool. So the tip I was using was really fine tip on the marker I was using. So I'm just going to use this pen, just like a regular big pen, nothing special. And I'm just going to literally make a hole. And I know you guys are cringing at home. I know I'm kind of cringing myself doing it. But at the same time, I just, I don't want to have to build up material there. So this will keep it more laminar when the air is going across it. That's what my camera crew recommended. Mm-hmm. Totally. Checking the CG on this plane is going to be awkward because it goes it way is. through my arm. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, so the front hole... On the front hole, we're nose heavy. I'm sorry guys. On the back hole, we're way nose heavy, okay? So we probably need to, now if you're just flying jets for the first time and you want a more stable flight, nose heavy is okay, but tail heavy is not a good idea. Yes, you can fly a tail heavy plane, guys. You know, the rule of thumb is nose heavy flies bad tail heavy flies once that's not true people fly planes tail heavy especially planes that they're trying to do high alpha in intentionally but that is a good rule of thumb for beginners do i a beginner anymore i don't think so oh sorry sure you're totally a beginner okay so i move that thing back a fair amount so that the front of the battery is just right on that front strap those positions should be pretty close from plane to plane so we're gonna try from the front position. Am I on the front position there? Yes. Okay. So at the front position, we're nose heavy. At the back position, we're very nose heavy. That wasn't very nice. So I definitely wanna check with the gear. Oh, maybe we should be doing this with the gear down. Oops. Let's see what it says. I did not pay attention I to that. I don't think it says. CG is given below and is measured from the leading edge of the wings at the root with the leading, with the landing gear down. Dang it. Mm. Sorry guys. Okay, so that being understood, what we're gonna do is we will come right back. We'll get this all established at the beginning of the radio setup, which is actually gonna be really short because this plane is very simple for radio setup. But look at that thing. All right, guys, we're going to start the video setup on this beautiful F-16. It is awesome. This plane is gorgeous. The scale lines are incredible. And we just got done marking the CG, but we can't test the battery location yet because we have to move the battery with the gear down. Obviously, the gear are fully retracted. One could argue that you want the CG to be right with the gear up. It just depends on the position. I'm just going to warn you guys, the CG is going to change a lot. There's two... Uh, metal trunnion landing gear they're going to come out the nose gear also the nose gear is steerable so it's going to be fairly heavy but the mains are actually pretty big too so it's going to change the cg a lot unfortunately so that being said we're going to take off the lid we're going to go ahead and get bound up if you want we'll come around here and start this process now as mentioned in the build series i know you guys were watching that before this um the radio setup on this is extremely simple. And you want to know why? Because they didn't support flak runs on this plane. And I was very disappointed to see that. That being said, we're going to fly it and we're going to love it. 
probably not tonight because it's really windy. Well, we'll have to wait until it gets darker because it's 6.30. And I bet around 7.30 it's going to be good. Maybe. So, without further ado, we're going to turn on the radio system. When this comes on, we're going to check our switches, make sure our switches are where we want them. Everything is where I want them. We're going to scroll down to system setup. We're going to go to yes. We're going to model select. We're going to scroll down, add new, click, create. Notice the RF is off. Okay, so we're going to go to model type. We're going to go to act. Acro, it's going to create a new acro. Aircraft type, normal, normal. Change that picture. I think they have an F-16 in here. Oh, better not just be a hulu. Do they not have an F-16? Come on, guys. I think I could probably update the firmware and get new ones. I guess in this case, it's kind of torn between eh, that one and eh, oh, no. It just looks like I made a mistake. <laughs> Model type. Don't change that once you change stuff. It's going to change the name. Okay, so we're going to switch this from Acro to F-16 Thunderbird 70 millimeter. So we'll come right back for that. So for what it's worth, we did F-16 F space Thunderbird space 70 millimeter. And if you notice, they called it the Thunderbirds 70 millimeter EDF. I don't really know why they called it Thunderbirds plural. I think Thunderbirds is the proper terminology. And then also, I just want to preface this. When we were doing the build video, I put those stars on per the picture on the box. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing I couldn't see on the box was the number on the bottom. So I just found that online. So like if there's some deep, meaningful significance to the positioning of those and I got it off by like 1%. <laughs> We're yes, really sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, it really hurts my soul. <laughs> okay, so aircraft type, normal and normal. Let's see where that is, because like I didn't, I didn't really notice that before. It's weird, normally, okay, so they have the CG here. Flight timer, three minutes? Holy jeez. We'll set that one real quick. Three minutes? what you call a quickie. I was just gonna say, a lot can happen in three minutes. Tone and vibrate, that means when the throttle sticks to over 25%, it's gonna start. I want it to be active for one time, meaning once it goes past, it starts and stays started. Okay, if you're flying a glider, you might want that to not be active because you're gonna be out of the throttle more than you are on it. But just keep in mind the receiver does consume power at a lower rate, but still, three minutes? Really? Seriously? Gosh, I can't believe that. Travel and dual rates. It shows how far they should move. We're not gonna mess with that. Over there. There you are. Guys, look at that. It's like the simplest setup ever. Go to the system setup, model utilities. Set model type, airplane. Seriously? That's it. That's what so the crazy. heck? I yeah. Okay. Well, there's like no, a no use for you. So we're gonna go back out. Like we didn't even have to switch the direction of travel on anything. Throttle cut. So throttle cuts on. Oh yeah, throttle set. cut. Throttle cut. We're gonna set that to switch H. By the way, guys, I think you might be able to do default settings to where every time you make a new model, it automatically incorporates that. Um, I just don't know how. What's the fun of that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I do a lot of tutorials on this channel, so that's part of it. See how it's locked down to minus 100? But when I let go of the switch, it allows it to work. Okay, so throttle cut is on, sticks down. All the control surfaces are where I want them. Expo and dual rates, we're going to set up now. Expo and dual rates, we're going to go down to ailerons. We're going to switch this to the F switch because... Uh, let's do 15 on ailerons. Let's do, let's start with 10 actually. Let's go 10. Let's do 20 and then let's do 30. And let's drop this back to, let's drop it back to, no, let's get 85, 85. So we'll do our low rate at 85, okay? So then elevator, same thing. We'll switch this to activate upon switch F. Start in the middle, we'll put that to 20. We'll switch to this, we'll put this to 10. 
and then in the high setting we'll set that to 30. Now you'll notice there's kind of a pattern here guys. The pattern is this. Very little expo, the normal what I expect it to be, and what would be if I didn't give it enough. Okay, so it's like incremental. More, more, more. Okay, this is like I need to get it to the ground but it's too touchy. This would be I need to get it to the ground but I don't have enough input. Okay, so that's the way I always do it for maidens. It's not a big deal. It's not like you have to do it this way. Rudder, we'll do 30. We'll set the rate down to, I uh, struggle with rudder because you need rudder on the nose gear when you're doing taxing mm -hmm. and stuff. So we'll set that to 85 on the high one. Then we'll set this to 20. And then we'll set the low rate to 10. Okay, so you'll notice it's the same on all three. Throttle cuts on, timer's cleared. We're gonna get ready to bind. So radio system is off. Don't forget to occasionally do this, guys. Occasionally, you have to back up your memory on here, okay? Because I have 75 planes on here. If this thing gets dropped and broken in 10 pieces, check this out. Click, scroll down to system setup. Yes, scroll all the way down. Transfer SD card. It's going to say insert SD card. Once you scroll down, it's going to say select option. You click export all models. This may overwrite files, which is exactly what we want to happen. That's how long it takes when you have a bunch of planes. <laughs> so while that's doing that, we're gonna get the bind plug figured out. We'll get the manual cage figured out. Safe binding is kind of a pain because you have one additional step. It's not really that hard. You just have to follow the steps on the page. Of course, that would require you to read the steps on the page, which nobody wants to do. So, oh wow, look at this. Now it's saying we need a 3200 milliamp 22. Well, what the heck? Is it 32 or is it 4,000 or is it 5,000? I've got that too. Okay. Where did it say 4,000? I know the way to solve this problem. <laughs> what? Use them all? <laughs> We've been around a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the 32 ready as well. Okay. We're just gonna start that. That's at ninety-four percent, so it's pretty much ready. To it go. says recommended thirty-two to four through four thousand. Well, I had somebody recommend five thousand because it's the same battery that I was using in the P fifty one. No big deal. Okay, so it's done. So we can back out. Make sure you're on the right model. Make sure you have adequate charge. If this is low, guys, your model may not bind. Shut it off. Keep your sticks in the position you want. Okay, we're gonna do this next. I'm gonna mark some things. Okay. We want safe. Select on, okay? So this one. If you don't want safe, you do this. So you insert the bind plug, power it up. Then you remove the bind plug. And then I turn this on while holding the button, okay? We're going to try to give you a shot, but we have to be far enough away for this to work. The radio signal, when too close, will sometimes be deteriorated to the extent that it just doesn't work. Okay, this has a diversity antenna, by, by the way, I don't know if you guys knew that. There's an antenna that goes vertical and an antenna that goes horizontal. Did you know that, Jennifer? I didn't, And this actually. doesn't fold or bend. The old ones used to bend, and they did break. I had a DX5E that it broke. Mm -hmm. That was scary. That I remember. Yeah, it was on the Sport Cub S. That was my first one, the one that I destroyed. Okay, so there's <laughs> evidently a bind plug somewhere in here. I, um, no, I know there's a, oh. I'm saying like there's a bind plug, the, the female oh. side of it, but to be perfectly honest, oh yeah, there's actually not, there's not a jumper because you can just get right to it in this plane. Oh, nice. See this guys? Side note, look at these fingernails. They're not especially long, right? They're not like especially manicured or unmanicured. They're just like average, I would say. <laughs> if you, I'm saying this for a reason, camera crew. When you work with these foam planes, if you have long nails, they will cut this plane. And I'm not just speaking to dudes, even though 99% of the dudes watching this are dudes. Your long nails will cut this stuff. So like seriously, be careful. Oh, and by the way, look at this edge. Hard plastic, hard yeah, plastic. That, nice. that is a good call, Horizon. Okay. Sorry. Jeez. 
I feel mm. discriminated against. <laughs> okay. Too bad. See this? So it's got the D shape to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can tell from there. I'm going to have to use something like pliers. It's too hard to get in that angle. Something like this. You feel the about? It's just it's yeah, an awkward it is. angle. I mean, it's worth it. The awkward angle. <laughs> Nobody likes an awkward angle. Some people do. Well, just, just they're weird. One side of it. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, you son of a gun. I gotta get way back here to be able to start this plug. Hmm. Okay, so it's started. Now, one little trick, trick of the day, guys. Don't stick it all the way in the hole now. Just resistance. Is this thing done? Is it's it? Done. 99 milliamp hours is all we have to do. Okay, transmitter's off. Are you ready to film? I like showing the screen, remember? I wanna show the flashy lights so that people understand. I mean, and the screen, which is challenging because I many know. times you can't see both at the same time, but we're going to try to do this so you can see this and that. Okay. A lot of planes anymore. It's getting pretty hard to do this. Okay. Smart pack ready. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to plug this in. Don't get scared by the spark. So we got the flashy light started. We're going to pull this out gently. Now we can bind and we will have safe active throttle cuts on. Whilst holding this, I'm going to power up. Flashy light continues, 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 continues. It says binding. Flashing light slows down. DSMX 22 milliseconds telemetry. You can let go. It's going to reboot. Then this thing's going to engage. See the AS3X safe dance. Two times through. Power it off. Why do we do this? Powers off. To double check. Let's see if it's on. That's not what it's on. No. Why? I do this because it's like a hard reboot of a computer. I want to make sure it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Throttle cuts on. Normally you would turn the radio on first. I just did that out of order. You'll notice there's no light. As soon as this turns on, it's going to work. The radio system's on. As soon as it finds it, it's gonna work. And it did. Now you'll notice I'm holding the tip of the plane. Why am I holding the tip of the plane? It's not because I'm deeply in love with this plane, although it is pretty awesome. I'm gonna lift this up, it's to keep it level. Okay? Oh, yes! Look, oleo strut, oleo. Look, spring loaded, but I'm afraid to push into them. Look at this, that is gorgeous. You know, somehow I feel like the weak point is going to be the foam before that strut activates. Wow, that looks so gorgeous. Okay, so gear are down. Now we can test CG. I love the way that works, guys. That is really good. Elevator, up, up. Let's show the people at home the correct direction. Oh, safe. Safe. Why do we know that's safe, camera crew? Because it's finding the quickest path to level. It is. And it is. Okay. Now that we're level, it stops. You can also test the limited bank angles, but it's harder to do that. Okay, so we're gonna lay can this they down. Go to yeah. the other end. Yeah, sure. We have pens and markers ready so that we can mark the CG. We're gonna check our control surfaces first. Throttle cut is on. Elevator up, elevator down. Look for limiting points, like where this one goes up and this one stops, okay? So I'm really concentrating at the end here, guys. Why does that matter, camera crew? If one stops and one keeps moving, you're gonna roll at the top of your throw and you're never gonna find it in flight because you're not gonna connect the dots. It's gonna be too hard to, well, I mean, you might know from like the experience, but you're not gonna have time to sit there and look at your sticks while you're flying, you're just gonna crash. Mm. So, roll, that rolls the correct direction, that rolls the correct direction. Rudder, rudder, correct direction. Check the steerable nose here, it is moving awesomely. And this is where flaps would happen. Oh. <laughs> so, everything is working right. Gear up is in the correct condition, because gear down 
would be, wait, no, that's backward. No, that'd be gear down. That's correct. It is in the correct position. Okay. I'll have to compare that to the other ones. Because normally I want the sticks all down. Maybe it is backward. That's weird. But what do you want the default to be? I don't know. Let's check the throttle. Let's check the power. Well, wait, you gotta do the CG. Stop getting distracted by the squirrel. Oh, safe, safe, safe. Okay. I'm gonna assign switch D. In order to assign switch D, we have to see if it's active. It is active on auxiliary one. Okay, later, that's gonna cause problems if we do flap runs. No big deal, we'll deal with it then. Sticks down and in, whoops. Sticks down and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as usual, it takes ten strokes instead of five. So, no big deal. I forgive you, Horizon. Okay, safe is either on or off right now, okay? I honestly don't know which one. Safe appears to be off now. ES3X does not activate until the first 25% out on throttle, okay? Safe is on, safe is off. Safe is off in the middle condition, safe is on in the top condition. So now that we know that, we can go ahead and make some adjustments. Check this out, people. I want that to be reverse, so we're gonna go to servo setup, we're gonna go to travel, whoops. We're gonna click it and switch to reverse. We're gonna go to auxiliary one, we're gonna click it, so now safe is off. Let's see if safe is off. Should be. Safe is off. Safe is on. Okay, so we've got everything set the way we want it. Now, whenever I have a plane with safe, and retractable landing gear. I put the retracts here because that's more critical than safe, and then I put safe here. I use thumbs, not pincer grip. So as a result, I have it up here. It's a little bit hard to get to that switch, just so you know. So if you're new and you're flying this way, you may want to you know, use one of these switches. It's easier to get to. But this is where flaps are for me. This is where gear is for me. This is where something else is, like bomb drop, tank drop, whatever, okay? Door, door opening, like on the uh, EC1500. Okay, so everything's working. Um, the rates are good, so we should be ready to test fly this as soon as the weather permits, but we got to do CV now. I can't breathe slower. I think <laughs> of me. She's like, get on with the CG, Brian. These people want to be done watching this, and I want to be done filming it. I'm going to go play with my kitties instead. Wow. Wow, it's a lot better. Okay, so gear down. That's on the front hole, though. Mm. So on the back hole, that's you know tight. So somewhere in the middle, so it's perfect on the front hole. So like it's supposed to be. So I I'm concerned. Okay, so this is this is the four thousand, right? No, this, yeah, this is the four thousand fifty C. Okay. Now, if this weighed exactly the same as the 3200 30C, which would, it won't, because this is a 50C, if we were comparing a 50C 4000 to a 30C 5000, you might be similar, but you're not gonna be exactly the same. Dimensionally, they're gonna be similar, but not the same. So I was hoping I could get the marks right. Oh. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna just go ahead and mark with this marker, ultra fine Sharpie, just a regular ultra fine marky marker. This is a regular tip that's called fine. This is called ultra fine. Okay, just in case you're wondering. I have a black shirt on, so that didn't mark me. <laughs> yeah, but my floor is not I black. Had, <laughs> but if I would have had a white shirt, it would have been a big problem. So what I'm gonna do is there's balsa wood down here. I would like to mark that, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna mark up here. So I'm just gonna mark the front, okay? So there's the front. See that? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to indicate where the wires go or any of that. You'll notice the lead is not very long on this, okay? But it's actually perfect because it's probably the easiest load we've had on an airplane uh, jet for mm -hmm. a while. I'm going to actually tentatively move this back a little bit because we know where the front mark is. Now I want to find where the back mark is. See, I'm all the way out of the strap. Off the strap, yep. That's probably where it's going to have to be to do that. So I've got one strap tied, but we have all that velcro on the bottom. We should be okay, okay? So I'm all the way back by a factor of the entire strap width. Let's check it. 
I want to be, I want to be on the tail heavy mark this time. I can feel them, but I just, I'm not confident yet. So. I'm not going to do it there. Yeah. It's going to have to be back quite a bit further. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to have to do is go back just a little bit more. Okay, so just for the record, folks, this is probably the least fun part of building an airplane. Mm -hmm. And yet it's probably one of the most critical. Yeah. Tell them how great. It is. I've seen enough to know. You've seen what happens yeah. when you don't do it. Yeah. Okay, I moved it back half a strap. You're like, Brian, how wide is the strap? The strap in the airplane, dude. The strap in the airplane. The one that's right in front of your face. Still no? No. 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 I don't know if it's going to go to the back hole. See? Maybe it's just not a, supposed to. Pull on a rejection. Yep. Okay, so let's talking about. pop this off again. Oof, I hate doing that to my new Velcro. Okay, so I'm going to just like really ride this up here right into it so that I don't put pressure on my Smart Pack balance charge lead. And so that I still have room to mitigate this connector to one side or the other, okay? We're gonna try this. That is a huge difference in yeah, position. I don't really know why it's such a big deal. So now, if I was gonna fly this pack right now, I would be inclined to try to go the other way, but I don't know if I can reach my leads. Yeah, so I don't you're know. probably gonna have to have them going that way. Okay, so that's two full straps. Almost exactly two full straps back. Oof. It's causing problems already, camera crew. That's what happens when you're trying to go too far back. I know, I know. Can't blame them for trying. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I always cringe, oh wow. See, I've got so much pressure on this right here that it's like pulling that exposed copper oh, there. I don't yeah. like that. So I'm gonna go like this, okay? I hate being so mean to my connectors. Make sure it's done with the AF3X dance before you do this, guys. Well, there's nowhere to go now. To be honest, uh, yeah, we, uh, the only way we'd be able to get it any further back would be to probably turn it sideways now, if we were gonna try to go sideways with it. But to be honest with you, I just don't see why, I think where I wanna fly it is probably gonna be where it's just on the very front. So, to be honest with you guys, I just don't, You'd have to put another Velcro on there. That'd be a pain. But you can do it, and it would work. See? Look. Because now, now the weak link is that stupid little thing on the AR-636B. Okay, question. Yes? When you put the gear up when you're flying... Won't it transition into a tail-heavy state? How much is it no, gonna... No, it's gonna actually shift it nose-heavy. The wrong... The other way. Okay. So, well, they've accounted for that to a certain extent. That's one of the reasons why I like the Verizon product because they work out some of these details. Yeah. Look how far back this is from our original mark. Yeah. We're like two inches back. I think it's probably going to be close now. Nope. Still not. Okay, so the answer to our lingering question is no you still, can't still no it's not gonna work so let's try the leads the other way just just to see, see if I mean, they reach there's like seven people still watching this so it's okay i know that's right this is this is kind of like when you go to a conference right and there's those two or three people that just like stick around mm -hmm. and annoyingly bother the speaker 
me. There is no extra length on this cable. If you want to put your leads the other way, you're going to have to put an extension in there. That's nuts. I know. But honestly, if it flies at that front line, I'm going to be very happy. So, knowing that we can't fly right this second, let's try it with the 5,000 and just see what happens, what becomes of it. Okay. We have a starting point with the other pack, but my guess is we're going to have to have this all the way back. And the lid went down perfect. There was no closure issues. That's, yeah, that's a pretty true. big deal. You usually don't get that in a jet. Come on, Horizon, that stupid plug is right in the way. Let's show them what I'm talking about so they don't think I'm complaining endlessly. Look at this. Come on, Horizon. Look at that. That stupid thing is in the way. Mm -hmm. Like, why didn't you just glue this back a quarter inch? It would have fit. I'm sure there was a reason. They probably toiled over endlessly for like five minutes. Wait, I said that backward. Yep. Okay, that's actually not a bad fit for the 5,000. Sometimes the CG doesn't work out exactly the way you think because it is a heavier pack, but not by much. I think this thing's gonna be flying nose heavy. I don't know if I like that. Still nose heavy. All the way back. All the way back. I don't want to add tail weight to this. If you're, because you always debate about where the CG marks should actually be. If the CG marks were further forward. You mean like if they were forward because like this was actually what they meant? Yeah. Would that make it better or worse? Um, okay, so the further back you go, the more nose heavy it appears. Right. Okay, so. If, if, if it was measured from a, a forward area, then yeah, it's possible it would be. So, I mean, if they were measuring from here and I measured from here, then that would do, that would resolve the problem completely. But that's super ambiguous. Like, how do you know? Well, this is not ambiguous as much as the others. This one's pretty good compared to many because you have a distinct wing and you have like a literal triangle pointing to it. So I feel like this one's probably where it's supposed to be, you know? Um, so I guess we're just going to have to wait and see how it flies. My predisposition is the 5,000 is probably going to be harder to flare landings with because it's bigger. Let's try with the 3,200 and see how it fits. The 3,200, of course, is the smallest pack. If we ride it all the way back, then we should be able to get it to be tail heavy. I just don't like putting dead, dead weight in my airplanes, ever. I've never wanted to. I mean, there's been, I can't even think of a time. No. There was one. Or, there was like a glider I might Yeah, have but that's the only one I can think of for sure. Mm -hmm. Generally, you're, you're not struggling to get weight in the tail. Right. So this is a 3200 milliamp 6S, smart pack, 30C. Wait for the dance to subside. I didn't wait quite long enough, sorry folks. Yes, at the back position. On 3200, you can get it in there and it will CG out on the back position. To make it CG out at the front position, I'm guessing we're going to have to go like pretty much all the way up to the front. Like right where we started from. Mm -hmm. With the 3000, you're probably going to have to have it right on the Velcro. Let's see how, let's see how that works out. See, that's the thing, guys. It's always a trade-off. You know, you put more capacity in a plane, it's going to fly longer, but it's going to consume more milliamps per hour which means you may not fly that much longer, but you might have a little bit more power um, when you need it. Meaning it's not gonna sag as quick. So yeah, so if you do this, the 3200 gives you the flexibility, maximum flexibility. 
um, in terms of getting your CG exactly the way you want. There's definitely plenty of room. You could run that almost. You could run that up, you know, way up here, guys, to get your CG exactly where you want. So if you're if you're a newer, more inexperienced pilot, and you want this thing to fly nose heavy to begin with, um, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to ride your pack a little bit forward, um, and I think you're going to be more happy with the results because the tail heavy planes are a little bit more squirrely. This plane is supposed to fly really good in high alpha, which tail heavy planes typically uh, perform the high alpha maneuvers best. So there you have it guys. Uh, I'm going to hold this up for an awesome shot. This thing is going to be cool. You've probably already seen the flight. If you haven't already bought this plane, seriously, if you haven't, check the link in the description below. It's possible there could be a sale at any time. You never know when that's going to happen. 